everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I have a little bit of a different card to share for you. This is um, a watercolor card, and so it's made using the Lawn Fawn stamp set Critters of the Sea, and then we're going to watercolor it. So I have an A2 size card, and that's side folded here. I have a piece of mixed media cardstock cut to the same size, and then this is the stamp set here that I'm going to use for the card and I'm going to use my watercolor palette. Now I created another video setting this up and I'll link that in the description below if you want to check out the colors that I've used and sort of how I set that up. Anyways, we'll use that here and I'm just going to get my cardstock ready to go. I'm putting it down with some post-it tape and I'm going to use stays on ink for this process. I used a lot of different stamp inks with the watercolor and I found that this worked the best on the mixed media paper. It's a permanent ink and so it does make a bit of a mess of your stamps and um, I don't know if you noticed in the beginning you could see some of my stamps had darker outlines that's because of this ink but it works really well with the watercolor it's permanent so it'll keep on the paper and not bleed on us when we paint so I'm just laying out my stamps here and this is my composition I've put the sentiment down in the center first and then I'm just arranging these and finding out where I want them to be on the card approximately. I want them to have sort of equal spacing and so I'm going to start with the dolphin because he's the biggest one and so he's going to be sort of my anchor stamp for the four characters. And so once I have this little guy in place it'll be easier for me to estimate where I want the other ones to land. So next I'm going to do the turtle, but I do want to put them all back just to get the spacing correctly. Um, and so just kitty cornering these and then I'll do um, the little octopus next. So I guess I'm working biggest to smallest, but also um, sort of framing it slowly this way too. And so I thought that this actually would be a cute card to do because I just came back from a Caribbean vacation and I spent a lot of time doing some watercolor and plain air drawing and painting too and so I wanted to do something with watercolor and then because I have just spent this week this wonderful week in the Caribbean I have all these little sea creature themed thoughts in my head and so I thought that this would be a fun card to do and sort of kept the mood going of vacation even though I'm home now and it's snowing a blizzard here and I'm snowed in at the moment and working from home but um, yeah, I thought that this would be a really fun card to follow up with. So hopefully I'm bringing a little bit of sun back with me. So now I'm going to get ready to watercolor this. We'll do the dolphin first. And I'll try to go through the colors as well as we go. Now I'm using a number 4 round grum Grumbacher brush. And then I have this number 8 round that I'm going to use that one for the background. So it's a little bit bigger. I picked these up at Michael's and they're a medium grade watercolor brush and these are my favorite. I love this brand and I have a few more of them as well. I use them quite a bit. So we'll start with the number four. I'm going to mix some phthalo blue and then I'm going to mix a little bit of ultramarine and also I'm putting a little bit of, um, let's see, that color is purple lake. So I'm just adding a little purpley tone to this blue and then I will add a little bit of indigo as well. And so indigo is on the right side there. I'm just picking it up now. And it's more of a gray, like a darker bluish gray, just to tone down the blue a little bit. Now when I'm painting watercolor, usually I think about how I would color with Copics and I, with the Copic markers, and I use that same principle. So I try to put a wash, a light wash of light color and I always start from the shadows first. And so watercolor is always heaviest where you lay it down first and where your brush touches the paper last because the pigment will follow your brush and it will, um, it will puddle or pool in the last part of um, the block of color that you're adding, the last part you touch. So of my dolphin, I want the shadow to be on the bottom so I'm putting that, um, that color in that space first, in that pigment. And then I'm gonna come in, once I have this laid down, I'm gonna rinse off my brush in the water that I have, and then I'm gonna come in with a clean, damp brush and blur out that line, that hard shadow line, up into the rest of the dolphin. And so here I'm pushing that pigment out from that shadow and then blurring it up into the top part and then finishing off my light wash of color. 
And so what this does is that creates the shadow and the light at the same time. Um, but it still gives you that shadow effect that you would get normally with coloring with a couple Copic markers. You might put down your wash first, your light wash, and then come in with your shadow color. Now the fun part about um, watercolor is once you do have your little man here colored or he's wet or damp on the paper, then you can come in and add a different tone inside the shadows. You could drop in a little bit of purple um, or a purpley blue and kind of make those colors dance a little bit more and it creates interest too. When you add colors that are outside of just the main color you're using, that's always a fun, um, it gives a fun effect and it, and it looks really neat. So I'm just adding a bit of my turquoise as well. I have mixed turquoise that I'll show you later on how to add that as well because we'll use that for the background. But I'm just dropping that into the shadows. And so with mixed media paper as well, um, this isn't a watercolor paper. It's meant to handle all different types of medium. And I find that this works well for having very vibrant colors. And it also worked well for letting you push around the pigment. Watercolor paper is very absorbing, and so it will suck up a lot of your pigment and your and your water that's in the pigment, so it makes it dry a lot lighter than it does when you put it down first on the paper. But with this paper here, it actually holds that vibrancy and holds it on top of the paper a little bit more, and so it doesn't blur as easily, but it also gives you the freedom to um, work with it and really see what you're going to get. It doesn't change too much from being wet to being dry, if that makes sense. So I've just zoomed in here and we'll do the little octopus next. I'm going to do him with Purple Lake, which is one of my favorite colors. I love this color. And so to start, um, you may have seen me damp the top part of my bristles on some uh, paper towel. You want to make sure that you have paper towel on hand. Water, um, you want to make sure that you don't have too much water in your brush and these brushes do hold water well which is good and you want that with a brush but because I'm coloring such a small area I don't want to have too much water coming out so I just tap the top part of my bristles onto some paper towel and just pick up a little bit of that dampness and so here laying down the color you can see that I put the shadows to the right and that's where I first laid down my color so I have the deepest darkest tones where I first put my pigment down and then I'm just bleeding it from that with my brush. So there I dabbed um, the water again and here I have a little bit too much pigment, pigment on my brush. And so I've just damped that on my paper towel to pick up some. And so I'm going to blend this all out. And a little bit goes a long way. So if you're a little nervous using watercolor if you're new to it, I am actually pretty new to it as well. Um, but if you're a little bit nervous, just do some testing on a scrap piece of paper. You're not going to waste a lot of pigment to do your test. It takes hardly anything at all. Watercolor goes a long way. It's actually a very affordable medium. So it's even with the expensive brands, if you get a professional brand versus a student grade, um, you're still not going to use too much. So especially in this application too, because they're small elements that we're coloring. So I'm just adding a little purple dioxide. Um, I had a little bit of water drop off my brush. Sometimes it will hold on the barrel part, the gold part, that when you dip it in your, your water vessel to rinse it off, um, some drips will sometimes fall down on your paper. You have to be careful of that. And so I had that happen here. And so I'm just recoloring the part of the octopus that got lifted. So that's the other thing. If you need to change what you've painted, you can lift a lot of your pigment just using a damp um, brush with just clean water and so watercolor takes a while to dry so you do have a little bit of time but if you're coloring you don't want to um, you don't want to push it too far you want to get in and get out you want to get on the paper put down your color move it around where you want it very quickly and then just leave it alone until it dries and then you, that's the best result. You can do multiple layers too. You can build up your color or add more after. And that's sort of what's happening here. So I'm adding some dioxazine purple into the shadows. And so creating a little more color interest. But I did wait for the first layer to dry a little bit before coming in with the second color. And so 
That also helps too because if your paper's already started to dry, you've left it for a little bit and then you come in and continue to work, it will lift the color off the paper. So you either want to do it right away or wait until it's dry and do a second layer. Now with this little guy too, I'm doing some speckle effects with the purple lake. I just thought it added a little texture to him and it turned out pretty neat. I liked the effect. so. So now we'll do the turtle and I'm going to start again. This is using sap green. This is like a yellowy green. And so I'm putting it at the base of his head first. So the shadow is coming out from behind his turtle shell. So if I was coloring this with Copics, I would also lay it down a darker color there. And then just blending it out to the face where that part is lighter. Now I'm coming in here with hooker's green light and just adding some uh, shadow color, I guess. And it'll blend in with that sap green that I just put down because they're both wet. So they'll mingle a little bit together and look really nice. And so I'm doing the speckled effect for him too. I thought that it applied as well to the turtle. So I thought it was a really neat effect. And so I'm doing that technique for all of the um, little fin flippers here, his tail as well. I find that hooker's green is more of a forest green. Um, so with the uh, sap green, that's more of a yellow green, they, they complement each other nicely. They add a little bit of visual interest because they're not exactly the same green. And they're really fun. So I'm going to use the sap green and go in between the shells, um, the little bubbles on his shell, I guess, the little lines in between. And so I'm going to add um, the hooker screen in from the edges using that as my shadow color. Now I'm going to let that dry. Now normally I'd go and do the shells next, but because the other spacing around it is wet, you want to let that dry before you come in and try to bring in a different color beside a wet color or they will blend and mix together and make a muddy mess. So I went ahead and put purple lake on my little snail and then I'm just going to come in with permanent rose and this is about the same tone so it's hard to see, but I'm just going to do a line on each shell wave of this permanent rose and it adds a real pretty vibrancy and you'll see it at the end there you can see a bit how you how the permanent rose kind of brightens up the center and so now I'm going to come in with a blend this is a mixture of hooker's green light and viridian hue and viridian hue is a real emeraldy green it's so pretty and so that gives it more of a a bright color but if I'd have tried to put this down while the shell was wet with the lines it would have mixed together and I would have lost that definition so now going back to my little snail I'm doing him in a base of raw sienna and then I'm adding in some burnt sienna into the shadows the parts where I would put shadows anyways if I was coloring with copy markers like I said so around the back and um, around the parts of his arms that are coming out from underneath his body and so using a little bit of the blue I had left over from my dolphin, I'm just coloring in the bubbles and putting the higher concentration of pigment at the bottom of the bubbles. And so that's the last part that, or the last place that my brush touches the paper. And so that way we get that shadow and that's the darkest spot. Now we're going to use a mix of Viridian Hue and Ultramarine Blue and maybe a bit of indigo as well and this is going to be our background color I'm going to come in with the number eight brush now because that's the larger one and I'm going to mix that all together until I have a blue that I like and this is going to be my ocean blue this color these colors together are so beautiful they're just gorgeous and I can't stress enough how vibrant these look on the mixed media paper this is Strathmore paper that I got at Michaels I'll put everything in the description below so you know the the additions and that sort of thing all that good information. So to come in, I'm just going to put this on the corner first and a high concentration. I want to do a vignette where it's darker on the outside and then as we get into the center where the little animals are, it lightens up, the background does. So now I'm coming in with a damp clean brush. So I just rinse that off in the water that I have beside me and just tap it a few times on some paper towel to catch the drips. And then I'm just rubbing from the pigment into the paper out, um, pushing that pigment around towards the center. 
And so a little tip here at the end of that corner there, I'm working from the white space up into the pigment instead of pulling the pigment down on that last wash. And what I find this does is creates more of a seamless blend between the white and the colored corner. I find that if you're trying to pull the pigment down, because this isn't watercolor paper, it stays on top and so a lot of that pigment will move and I really wanted that to bleed into white. So I found that if I put water into the white area and brought my brush up into the pigment, then it blended better. So that's a little tip to try. But otherwise I find the mixed media papers very forgiving and a lot easier to use than watercolor paper would be. So to add some interest when I was doing the corners, I did drop in a little bit of Viridian Hue as well, just right on my paper after I had my mixed color. So now I'm coming in with the lightest wash of that color just to fill in the background. It was a little white and a little stark compared to the edges. So I just damp my brush with a lot of water and just a touch of pigment and just moving that around the animals in the background. So I set that to dry and I let it sit for about half an hour. And so now that it's dry, I'm going to put it on my card backing. So just adhering this with my tape roller. Normally what I would do is I would add my tape and then I line this up on the folded edge. So normally I do this, but because the card stock, um, the mixed media stock is thick, it's kind of bending and I want to make sure that those edges line up clean. So I'm going to come in and do this by hand and line it up this way. And then once I have everything good, I just push it into place. And this is my card. So now I'm going to add some bling. We're going to put some little glitter pieces on. This is a mixed set I bought from Michaels. It's a recollection set. So I'm just going to put a little bit of craft glue at the side on some scrap paper. Coming in with the blue stars, um, just tapping my craft knife into the and uh, sorry into the glue, and then just picking up a star. You it just needs the smallest amount of glue. It doesn't take much at all to make it stick. And then I just slide that down into place. Hold it with my finger and then pull the knife out from beneath. And so first I did an even distribution of stars spaced out. And then once I had that, I started putting a higher concentration of stars in the corners. So creating more of a grouping. I don't want them to all be equally spaced because it looks kind of vanilla, I guess. It doesn't give as much dimension. But I find if you do little pockets of stars or clusters, then it looks a little more dimensional. So then I'm coming in with the green stars and just adding a few into those pockets of stars in the corners only. I didn't put any into the white space. And then to finish it off, I'm coming in with my Brush of Stella pen in clear glitter, or Wink of Stella, sorry, in clear glitter. It's a brush pen. And so just dabbling this on the animals and glittering them up too. So there you have it. This is my fun watercolor card um, carrying on my Caribbean vacation theme. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified the next time I post a video. Thank you so much for watching.